One of the best way to measure report success? You guessed it. User engagement. And user engagement is largely based on user experience. And today I'm going to show you a way in which you can improve the user's experience. Let's imagine you have a slice that looks like this or like this. One way of making this more convenient? Allowing users to select predetermined periods for analyzing data. So let's not waste any time. Head over to Power BI Desktop and I'll show you what you need to do step by step. First, we need to define the periods. So go to Enter Data, rename the table as Period Slicer, and we need two columns one for the period and one for sorting the periods. And now let's define the periods. 7 days, 30 days, 90 days, and 365 days for this exercise. And for sorting, 1, 2, 3, 4. You might ask me, why the sort column? Well, let me show you. Let's select this slicer and let's change the date with the period that we've created in our table. You see, if we leave it as it is, those periods are not sorted the way we want it. So, if we head over to Model View, select the table, select the column, go to Advanced, and instead of the period default sorting, choose Sort. When we go back to our report, they're in exactly the same order that we wanted. Now, let's select one or the other. Nothing happens. That happens because if we select this KPI visual, for example, if we look at the data, we have the original measures. Measures that are not linked with our periods. So, we need to create a few more measures. Let's start with the sales one. Right click, new measure, we'll call this sales by period, and it equals to and here we need a couple of variables. One would be the selection in the slicer. And that would look like this. Variable, selection, and it equals to selected value, period. Let's close the parentheses. And to test it, we will return the result. Return, selection. Press Enter. And let's drag this measure onto the screen. Perfect. 7 days, 30 days, 90 days. Perfect so far. Now let's head back to the measure. The second variable that we need to create is the one of the maximum date, which in most cases would be today. So let's build it. var max date equals today. Now this is the general use, but in my case, my calendar table goes just to 31st of May 2024. So for this exercise only, I will need to select max and then the date from the calendar table. In most cases, like I said, it should be the today function. Okay, let's return the result. Max date, I would expect 31st of May 2024 as a result. Perfect. The next variable that we want to create is how many days we're going back. So we need to create a variable that returns the number of days based on the selection. So it will be var number of days. And here we will use the switch function. Switch. And if condition is true, and here comes the first condition, is the selection, it's equal to, in between quotation marks, 7 days, then 7. Else, we need to do the second condition, and we'll copy this condition again, and we'll change 7 with 30, and repeat this two more times, 
This time it will be 90. And for the last time it will be 365. Let's close the parentheses. And you know what? Let's put it to the test. So, returned number of days. 7, 30, 90, 365. Perfect. Okay, let's head back to the measure. Now that we have all this, we need to return the sales. So, instead of number of days, we say return calculate sales for the dates between calendar date, the start date will be the max date minus number of days. The end date obviously is the max date. Okay, let's close all the parentheses and press enter. Now when we select a different time period, it will do the calculation for that time period. All we need to do now is go to sales by period, format it correctly, and this time is currency with two decimal places, and in my case, instead of dollar, it should be pound. Perfect. Now we need to repeat the same thing for orders and quantity, and let me show you a very quick way to do it. So select your measure, copy, create a new measure, paste, double click on sales, press Ctrl F2, and instead of sales, we will say orders. Repeat the same process again, new measure, double click, Ctrl F2, quantity. Perfect. Now we've just created three new measures in the time it would take us to do one in a bit. Let's select this visual, replace sales with sales by period, orders with orders by period, and quantity with quantity by period. Perfect. Let's put it to the test. Everything works just as intended. But you might have noticed that the bottom line chart is not affected by the slicer. That is because, of course, we still have the same measures on it. So, let's replace sales with sales by period. Excellent. And since we are here, let's add the orders and the quantities as well. So orders and quantities. But of course, we have the problem of the y-axis. In my previous video, I already shown how you can sort this problem. So let me show it to you again for the sake of the exercise and we'll go to modeling, new parameter, fields. We will call this parameter chart and we will add our new measures, sales, orders and quantity. So let's rename this to sales, this one to orders. And the last one to quantity. Add the slicer to the page, hit create. We'll put the slicer here. And instead of sales by period, orders by period, and quantity by period, we will only add our new parameter. So the parameter is chart. We select it and we have all three of them. Now when we make a selection, you'll see that it will show only one measure. Of course, what you need to do in this case, in the slicer settings, go to selection and turn on the single select. And you would like to have single selection at the slicer for the period as well. But you might ask me now, if we have these custom periods, how would that work with the year over year? Because obviously the dates are a bit all over the places, not necessarily something set in stone. So let me show how you can do that. Before we start creating the measure, let's open the sales by period measure. And we need to copy the first three variables. Why? Because there is absolutely no point in writing them again. So right click new measure, we'll call this one period over period sales, 
and it equals 2. And we already have the first three variables. Let's copy paste this variable from here just to make it look good and be easier to understand. So this is the maximum date. We'll rename this from maximum date to maximum date selected period. And the minimum date for the selected period would be var min date selected period and it equals to max date minus the number of days. Now we have the period for the selection and we need to calculate the sales for the previous period. Now in order to calculate the previous period, again we need the start date and the end date. And we'll start with the end date. So we have var max date previous period and it equals to the minimum date from the selected period minus 1. And then we need to do the minimum date for the previous period and it is equal to min date previous period equals to max date previous period minus you guessed number of days. Now we need to calculate the sales for each period. So variable sales selected period equals to calculate sales for the dates between the date from the calendar table. Start date is minimum date selected period. End date is maximum date selected period. Close the parentheses. Let's copy this variable. We will rename it to previous period and we will replace the date to reflect that. Previous period, previous period. And now that we have all the variables set, what we need to do is return the result. And that will look like this. Divide sales selected period minus sales previous period divided by sales previous period. Press enter and that's it. Now that we have this, you know what, let's put it to the test. Let's drag this chart a bit lower. Let's copy this KPI card again and replace sales by period with period of a period sales, which of course reminds me formatting. Select the measure and format it as percentage. Now let's copy the text and do two more measures for orders and quantity. Exactly like I showed you before. Replace the sales with orders and replace the sales with quantity. Control F2, quantity. Of course, make sure both of them are formatted as percentage. Let's go back to the KPI card. Let's select POP orders and POP quantity. Absolutely perfect. If you select a different time period, it will show you the exact result that you were expecting. As for the chart, you can always choose a different measure to be shown. Excellent. Now, of course, you can leave the slices alone and this is it. But I usually like to play a bit with how they look and here's what I like to do. I select the slicer. I turn it into a tire slicer. First of all, let's remove the title because it's pretty obvious. Next, in the shape, I go with rounded rectangle and 10 pixels rounded corners. Let's move it up here to be easier to work with. Let's make it a bit wider. Now, next in layout, I want to show a maximum of one row and four cards. Of course, play with the size. Next, we'll go to call out values. For default, I would like to have the font as CQUI semi bold. 
sent it and then for selected I'd like to make it a little bit different I'll go with a Siguri UI bolt again needs to be centered and when I hover I would like the text to be ever so slightly bigger so I'll go to I'll select hover and make the text 30 now of course you need to check everything and make sure the dimensions are correct it works fine another thing that I'd like to do is go to size and style padding remove all the padding for this visual alone make it zero and then for the buttons I will do the exact same thing make sure it's on default custom zero 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 and zero why do I do that? Because that allows me to make the buttons ever so slightly smaller without losing the text. So, if we go... So, let's make it a bit smaller and see everything works fine. And if you want to go even further, you can use an SVG for a background. And the measure would look something like this. It will create a rectangle with the width of 150 pixels, the height of 100. Of course, you can play with it. Select your slicer. Go to images. Add your gradient. Remember to add it for the state selected. And turn set as background. And there you have it. Nice gradient, something unique, let's call it. Now we have this other slicer here for the parameter and we want to give it the same treatment. So let's go to slicer, tile slicer to transform this a bit quicker. Select the first slicer, format painter and apply the same settings to our second slicer. Of course, the one difference in the layout, you will have three columns rather than four. And of course, the dimensions might need to be ever so slightly different. Well, yes, just a tiny bit wider. Of course, from here on, you can play more with the formatting and make it look exactly like you want. But for the sake of this exercise, I would say this is enough. But if your user would like, for example, to see if orders affect sales or quantity affect sales, then you can't do it this way. So if you want to know how, then watch this video right here where I'll show you exactly what you need to do. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and even share this with someone who needs to see it. Until next time, this is Telian signing off. Cheerio!